Hello and good afternoon, CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy CCMP Switch course, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be on Gateway Load Balancing Protocol, or GLBP, the Cisco proprietary uh, solution for first hop redundancy. As you can see, you should be familiar with the layout that we have right here. This has been used a couple times before in our Cisco Learning Labs curriculum. And this is going to be Discovery 16. So this is going to ease us into and introduce us to the configuration parameters that we need to have set up in order to get Gateway Load Balancing Protocol fully configured and set up. You're going to find that this is very, very similar to HSRP and VRRP. Now again, keep in mind that HSRP and GLBP, so Hot Standby Router Protocol and the Gateway Load Balancing Protocol, those are both Cisco proprietary solutions. So you will not be running HSRP and GLBP with other vendor hardware. However, VRRP, the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, is industry standard, it's an open standard, and you can run that between Cisco and Juniper, Cisco and HP, or Cisco and any other vendor. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here. We're gonna start out with our configuration on router one. And so let's go ahead and go from user exec to privilege exec, and let's say show IP interface brief and see what we've got right here. So as you can see, we've got four interfaces, but only one of these interfaces is currently configured. And that's our 192.168.2.1. Uh, uh, and let's go ahead here, let's pull up uh, the job aids real quick and let's enlarge this so we can see what we're dealing with here. Uh, the 192.168.2.1, you can see that's the Ethernet 00, 0 interface uh, on this slash 24 network right here between router one and router three. So we're gonna be configuring this interface right here, Ethernet 0, 01. Uh, in order to provide gateway load balancing protocol first hop redundancy for our hosts, PCs 1, 2, and 3. So we've got our IP addresses. Let's jump back over here. We're going to set up router 1 first. So we're going to go into global config. We're going to say interface Ethernet 01. And then we're going to put our IP address on here, which is 192.168.1.3. And this is going to be a slash 24. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fire up GLBP. So before we do this, let's go ahead and see. If I were to say debug, is there a debug GLBP? There is. So I'm just going to do debug GLBP, and we're going to see if we get everything uh, related to GLBP. So let's get back in interface Ethernet 01, and now let's turn on GLBP. We're going to use the group number of 1, and this is going to be my virtual IP address, 192.168. Dot one, dot one. So we should see some activity here. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what we just saw. And we're going to start. Got some more messages coming up here. Uh, so we've got our hello. So let me go ahead and say, do you all. So let's bring these to a quick stop here. Do you all. And we want to scroll back up here to the top. Uh, and take a look at some of the messages that we saw earlier. So one of the key things to remember is that GLBP uh, is going to be using UDP port 3222. So 3222, that's the UDP port that's both inbound and outbound, or source and destination, that's going to be used by GLBP. You can see that it says joining the IPv6 multicast right before this. I'm not sure where the message went. Uh, we scrolled down, we lost it. It said IPv4. And so remember, IPv4, it's going to be using 224.0.0.102. So that's the multicast address that it's going to be using with IPv4. Uh, you can see that the address uh, comes up. It says it's not a GLBP address. And then we go into the states. Now the states, when we compare this to HSRP, uh, the states are almost identical, uh, and we're going to talk about the active virtual gateway and the active virtual forwarder here in a second. Uh, but again, we've got the disabled state, and then it goes into the init state, which is short for initial. And then it's going to go into the listen state, and after the listen state, it should go into 
speak. And let me see if we see that. Oh, here we go right here. Uh, listen into speak. And then after the speak state, it should go into standby. Uh, if it was going to end up as a standby, it appears that it transitions directly to active because there's nobody else out there. Uh, so this is going to become the active GLBP active virtual gateway. Now, uh, you'll also notice that we've got the virtual forwarder information as well. And you can see that here is the VMAC or the virtual MAC address that gets assigned to this router. Now, remember, it's similar to what we saw with HSRP, a different MAC address, right? But we, we're going to have an active virtual gateway, and there's only going to be one of those. And then we're going to have a series of active virtual forwarders, and there can be up to four of those in any GLBP group, right? So GLBP group. Uh, and one of those active virtual forwarders will be the active virtual gateway. Uh, and you can see virtual gateway that we are the active virtual gateway or the AVG. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some of this other information later, but let's go back to the MAC address. Remember that the MAC address, it's going to come down to, uh, it comes down to the 0, 1, and then it comes down to the, um, the last two hexadecimal characters being uh, the group number. And so it's very, very similar to what we saw with HSRP. Uh, now, what's going to happen is uh, the router number is also going to be involved uh, in the MAC address um, creation with GLBP. And in fact, I think I just misspoke there. I think we've got the, um, so it's got the Baker 4, and then we've got 00, zero and then this would be XX, and then this is going to be YY, and so the YY is the virtual forwarder number. So this is actually the virtual forwarder number, uh, whereas the bits that precede that are going to be the GLBP group number. So had that backwards so let me clear this here real quick and let's make sure we get this straight so this is the glbp group number and that is the virtual forwarder uh, number so depending on whether or not we're virtual forwarder one or virtual forwarder two and you're going to see that uh, when we configure the uh what is it router two on the other side it's going to come up and say zero two but remember it's not because it's router two that it's zero two here on these last two hex characters it's because it's active virtual forwarder to four group one and remember uh, that the group number with hsrp was the last two characters with glbp it's going to be the uh, next to last two characters hex characters right there all right so we saw some good information here in the debugs and we are right now, if I were to say, do show GLBP, um, let's see, do show GLBP, we can see that the state is active. We are the active virtual forwarder. We've got the virtual IP address here. Again, the hold time and the hello times identical to HSRP. We'll talk about the redirect and the forwarder timeout uh, a little bit later on. So now you can see here, preemption disabled. So who is the active virtual gateway? Well, the active is the local, and that means that router one. Standby is unknown, because as of right now, we don't have a standby identified. The priority is 100, that's the default. Now, with GLBP, remember, this is the significant advantage to GLBP, and that is that we've got three different load balancing mechanisms that we can leverage when using GLBP. So we could do weighted load balancing, we could do host dependent uh, load balancing, or we can do round robin. Now the key to remember is that round robin is the default. Uh, so when we set this up, if we don't change the default, it will be round robin. All right, so that takes care of the setup on router one. Let's go ahead and transition here over to router two, and let's bring router two into the fold so we can see what it looks like when we've got multiple routers here. So we're going to go into global config, do show IP interface brief. Let's see what we've got. 
All right, so we're going to go into interface Ethernet 01, it looks like. We're going to say IP address 192.168. Oops, 192.168.1.2. Uh, 255 so it's a slash 24 192.168.1.2 there we go and now let's go ahead and activate GLBP so we're going to say GLBP 1 and then IP which is the same virtual IP 192.168.1.1 now remember it says that we don't have to activate that that we do not have to activate that. Let me do a Q here. Uh, we don't have to put the IP address in here on the secondary. Uh, that the secondary would end up learning that GLBP, uh, the primary would, would tell the secondary, which would be router two, it would tell it that um, this is the virtual IP that we're using. So let's go ahead and say, do show GLBP. And let's see what we've got. You can see our state is standby. Uh, again, preemption is disabled, right? By default, preemption is disabled. And it's the same way with HSRP. Remember that with VRRP, preemption is enabled by default. But with the two Cisco proprietary solutions, that is not the case. All right. So let's see. Would R2 have learned, do show run interface Ethernet 01, if I were to say, uh, no, GLBP1, IP192.168.1.1. If I were to pull that off, uh, then if I were to say do show GLBP, you can see we've got nothing set there. So how would this work? Would I say GLBP1 and then not put the IP address? If I put a question mark here, you can see that it doesn't show uh, an option to just hit enter, it's gonna come back and say incomplete command. Uh, but what if I put in here GLBP1 and let's set something other uh, than the, the IP. If I were to simply say name, I guess I could set the redundancy name and we'll just call this CCNP. So if I set that, if I only set the group number with another um, GLBP group attribute, and like I said, we'll just say name CCNP, is it going to learn that information automatically? So over here, same thing. If I were to say GLBP1 name CCNP. So we'll use CCNP as the name and let's see, does it learn the IP? So do show GLBP. And the state is init and take a look at what we have right there. Virtual IP address is 192.168.1.1. So how is it that it's learning this? Well, remember, in those hello packets, it's going to be communicating the virtual IP address. And if we're in the same GLBP group, then as a result, we're going to see that virtual IP. You can see what else do we learn, right? We learn for forwarder 1. And remember, who is forwarder 1? That's router 1 but I learn their virtual MAC address, okay? So um, let's see, did we get out of a knit? Yeah, we're kind of stuck in a knit here. So it did learn the address. We'll go ahead and we'll put it in to make sure we don't run into any issues here. So let's go ahead and say GLBP 1 IP 192.168.1.1. All right, so we've got that in there. Um, and so now we literally we've got GLBP set up between uh, the two routers do show GLBP and now we're in speak and we'll transition into standby here shortly and we'll give it a second and there we go so now we're in the standby state alright so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually configure preemption remember if you don't configure preemption and this is a question that was uh, asked last week if I don't configure preemption What's going to happen? Well, let's see what happens if I shut down, do show GLBP, whoops, GLBP. So I'm active. If I were to say shut, and I'm shutting down the interface on which I'm active. If I say do show GLBP, you can see that I'm in the init state and I'm gonna stay in the init state because my interface is down, right? 
So we're going to sit in the init state, but whoops, sorry about that. More importantly, what's going on over here on router two? Remember, on router two, when I say do show uh, GLBP, my state is active because again, there's nobody else there. We've got this EIGRP adjacency here uh, that when it goes down, we're losing connectivity. So we see ourselves as the active because there's nobody else there. And so it's taking uh, over as the active right now because again, uh, we've got no connectivity to the other side. We don't see anybody on the other side. Now let's bring this interface back up here on router one. And this is also going to bring up, this is also going to bring up the adjacency. So there's that EIGRP adjacency. So now I have visibility over to router one. But when I say do show GLBP, remember preemption is disabled on both sides. So two still thinks that he's active, right? You can see right here, router two says, hey, I'm active, so let's come over to router one now. So what is router one going to say? Router one is going to say that he is now standby. And so this is what's going to happen without preemption enabled, is that neither router is going to take over the primary role from another. So the, again, the reason it did initially when we took down the interface on uh, router one is because router two is the, that EIGRP adjacency. They're depending on that adjacency to see each other. Without that adjacency, uh, they're not gonna see each other. But when we brought router one back up, he was the active initially, but he is not going to preempt and take back over. So we're going to change that right now on router one. So we're going to go ahead and say GLBP uh, one priority. We're going to set the priority from the default of 100. We're going to change it to 110. And still, even with the higher priority, do show GLBP, I'm still the standby. Even though my priority is higher, I am the standby router. But now let's say GLBP one preempt. And let's see what happens now. So we've got preemption configured and there you go. It went from standby to active. However, what happened over here? We went from active to speak and now we're standby because again, router one is configured for preemption. So it will forcefully take over for router two. Now let's make sure uh, that router two, and so let's do this, right? So I change the priority to 110 and I have preempt on here. What if I change the priority to 50? Is that going to change things? So remember, the priority now on router one is half of what it is on router two. But on router two, do we have preemption enabled? We don't. Do show run interface Ethernet 01. There's no preemption there, right? So do show GLBP. We are standby. So we are not going to take over. What's router one think they are? Let's show do show GLBP. They still think they're active, even though their priority value is half of what router twos is. And this is because we don't have preemption configured on router two. So let's step over to router two and say GLBP one preempt. And let's see what happens here. So now we've told router two and there it is right there. So it went from standby to active because now we're telling router two with that GLBP one preempt command, we're telling router two that if you have a higher priority, than the active router, that you are to seize control of the active virtual gateway status, that you are going to be the active virtual gateway or the AVG, right? And this is very similar to what we saw with HSRP and with VRRP, right? When preemption is enabled, the routers are going to make a decision based on priority. Now, if the priorities are all equal, the decision would be based off of the highest IP address on this segment. So for example, uh, do show run interface Ethernet 01. So my IP is 1.2 
And over here on router one, show IP, I'm sorry, do show run interface Ethernet 01. The IP is 1.3. So all things being equal, router one based off IP, when they came up uh, and were equal, if they came up at the same time, router one would have established itself as the active virtual gateway. So now let's go ahead and do this. Let's say GLBP1 priority, and let's set this back to 110, and let's see, will it preempt and take back over and pull the active virtual gateway status? And it does. So now do show GLBP, right? Router one is active. Let's see what router two's status shows. Do show GLBP, and it is now the standby and it is an active virtual forwarder. Okay, so that takes care of sort of the basic setup uh, with GLBP. Uh, and again, I think that the, um, the Learning Labs uh, document does an amazing job. If you take a look uh, down at page three, it talks a little bit about the MAC address and what you're going to see. And so here we are an active virtual forwarder two Right, so here is forwarder two, and you can see that it is set up. And again, there, important point is you can tell right here, GLBP group one, active virtual forwarder is two, right? And these are the hex characters, right? Remember, these are hexadecimal characters. Here's the MAC address who is the owner, right? Owner ID is, and that should be us. Uh, and again, we are active as an active virtual forwarder. Okay, so let's clear that here. All right, so now what we're going to do, uh, they're asking us here to trace route with the clients. Okay, good, so now we're gonna be testing that end-to-end -end connectivity. So from PC1, Let's go ahead, so here we are on PC1, and let's see where we're going to go, which direction we're gonna go when we try to trace route out. Now, this is interesting, right? So they're having to start with PC1. Now, we're doing round robin. So round robin is the default load balancing mechanism for GLBP. Remember, we kind of have this virtual router here that is dot one, dot one, right? And it kind of goes back and it's actually active on both sides. So again, the major advantage of GLBP is that PC1 is going to send an ARP request out. That ARP request is going to go out and it's going to go to the active virtual gateway. Remember, there's only one active virtual gateway uh, that is active uh, in any GLBP group at any given time. There's only one. The ARP request comes out, the active virtual gateway is going to respond back because the AVG is the router who controls the load balancing and the responding to the hosts. So when active virtual gateway, the active virtual gateway replies back, in this case router one, he's going to look at his available virtual MAC addresses and reply back to whoever requests it and it's going to basically go in a round robin fashion. So it's going to go router one, router two, router one, router two, router one, router two. And they're going to, and router one is always going to be responding to the ARP request. So whenever a host down here at our access layer fires an ARP out for the default gateway of 192, and remember, this has been configured on either your host end or DHCP is telling these hosts hey, that is the default gateway for that network. The first ARP that comes in, the active virtual gateway, router one in our setup here, will reply back and say, yep, I'm, uh, I'll give you my virtual MAC address. And then the next ARP that comes in, router one will reply back and give router two's virtual MAC address. Now, if we had additional routers here, Let's say that there was another switch here and a connection here and another router here like this. And maybe this router connected up like that. So if this was router four, right? The third host, PC3, when he ARPs, router one is gonna snatch that ARP up off the wire and say, 
All right, I already gave one to me. I gave one to router two. Next will be router four. So then he would give the virtual Mac for router four. And this is how gateway load balancing protocol is able to leverage all of the existing links and not have to do what we had to do last week with HSRP or VRRP. And that would be creating multiple HSRP groups or VRRP groups in order to do the load balancing based off a VLAN perspective. This is gonna be far more granular. Uh, it's literally going to be by default round robin uh, and router one or whomever the active virtual gateway is will dish out, right? Or respond back to ARP requests in a round robin fashion to the end hosts and those end hosts they're all using that same IP address, right? That's the key. All of the in-hosts are looking at that same IP. It's the active virtual gateway. And if you think of it like this, it's actually like a proxy, right? These hosts are sending ARP packets to the default gateway, and it's actually the active virtual gateway that's a proxy for all of the active virtual forwarders. And remember, Router one is an active virtual forwarder as well as the active virtual gateway. But it's router one's responsibility and role as the active virtual gateway to respond to all ARP requests for that default gateway address to ensure that there is an equal distribution of responses based on the number of active virtual forwarders in the GLBP group. Okay, so because here's what we're going to do. We're going to spice this up a little bit because what they have us do now is they want us in step six to go to PC1 and to run the trace route command. And it's going to show, right, if we did that, it would show that PC1 is going to come this way because on the first request that comes in, router one is going to reply back saying, yep, come to me. The next request, the next ARP that came in, router one would say, nope, go to router two. And so then PC2 would then forward his traffic this way. So we're gonna spice this up a little bit here and we're gonna change this. We're gonna, we're gonna start on PC2. And let's see if PC2 says, I'm gonna go the way of router one. Because again, remember, router one is going to get the ARP request and it's gonna be router one who replies and he would be the first router uh, or the first active virtual forwarder uh, that would be uh, placed in line to respond to these requests. So let's get into privilege exec and let's say trace route 192.168.4.22. And let's see what direction he goes. And there it is. He goes to 1.3. And that is router, whoops, sorry, that is router 1. So uh, PC2 does a trace route and he goes this direction to get to the server. And this is our uh, 192.168.4.22 up here is the server, right? So he goes this direction to get to the server. So now let's go ahead on PC1. Let's clear this. Out. I'm sorry, on PC2. And let's see. If we say show IP ARP, what does it show for the default gateway, 192.168.1.1, right? That is our default gateway. We had to ARP out to find out where we're going to go. So from here on out, PC2 will be going to gateway load balancing protocol group 01 active virtual forwarder one who is router one. So you can see in this setup that we have here, you have to ask yourself, um, is that the desired flow that I want that traffic to go? Because now PC2 is gonna come here and instead of going this way, right? He's not gonna go this way. He's gonna come across that inner switch link up here and around that way. And now let's take a look at what happens when we use 
PC1. So who do you think is going to be uh, given to PC1 when we do the trace route from PC1? So if I were to say trace 192.168. Uh, what was it? 4.22? 4.22. Let's see which direction PC1 goes and take a look. Right? We had that little asterisk there as it arced out and went to the default gateway, but then the default gateway is going to respond back, right? So here is the first hop we actually take, and that is router two, right? And take a look here. What virtual MAC address were we given for that same default gateway IP address? GLBP group one, active virtual forwarder two in other words router two and so take a look at what's now happening um we've got sort of this um what do you want to call it suboptimal traffic flow now where pc1 has to come here cross this way and come up to get here and pc2 is going this way to get there and again this is you know it's not the end of the world the traffic is going to ultimately get to its destination but it's something to keep in mind when we talk about the round robin setup i mean if you're talking hundreds and hundreds of hosts down here it's going to be pretty difficult to control who arps out first for the default gateway, right? But in this use case that we've got here, which again is pretty contrived, but take a look. I mean, we're definitely taking, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, instead of one, two, three, four. So we've got that, the extra hop being this link right here, right? And it makes it a little more difficult uh, than just simply throwing it on there and uh, sort of, you know, hoping that it works. All right, so let's finish up our PC configuration because now what, we're, what are we going to see? We're going to see the next PC, which just happens to be PC3, is going to come online and it's going to be router 1 that responds. And so PC3, instead of, go, instead of going that direction, it's not going to go that direction, because router one is going to respond back with his own virtual MAC address. Because we just did router one first, then router two, now we're coming back to router one because we, we're doing round robin. So let's clear this out here. Come to PC3. Let's go from user exec to privilege exec. And let's say trace out to 192.168.4.22. And there we go right over to router one let's say show ip arp so who do we see as the virtual mac address there it is it's router one's virtual mac address because he is active virtual forwarder one okay let me scroll down here make sure i'm staying on track all right, so we're good. Uh, and again, you know, we end up with kind of that suboptimal flow. And they highlight that a little bit. Now what they're going to have us do is we're going to go ahead and shut down uh, the Ethernet 01 interface as well as Ethernet 00 uh, on router 1. So before we do that, let's take a look here uh, and make sure that we are... So we are the active virtual gateway. And if I come down a little further, let's take a look at... Uh, the different forwarders that we have here, right? So you can see we've got two active virtual forwarders. Whoops, did not want that. Let me, let me slide this up a little bit here, get it out of the way. There we go. So we've got two active virtual forwarders right now. We know that's router one and router two. So you can see here active, which is forwarder one, is local. Right, and over here, what does it say? For forwarder two, the active is 192.168.1.2. So that we know that this is router two, we know this is router one. You can see the virtual MAC address, right? 
and here is the MAC address here, which was learned, right, from the active virtual gateway. Um, and where are we at? Who owns this? This again, this is me. So this is the MAC address right here for router two. Uh, redirection, right? So we've got redirection. Uh, we've got our, t our time to live. So when we're talking about redirection, we're talking about the time after which the active virtual gateway would stop using an old MAC address, right? So like, let's say we have a failure. Uh, it's going to, the whoever's up uh, after the failure. So in this case, it's going to be router two. So router two is going to become the active virtual gateway and the active virtual forwarder. And even more than that, this virtual MAC address right here that router one is currently responding for, right? He is responding to requests that come into that that um, virtual MAC. He, router two, will take over that MAC address from router one. And so the timeout, or I should say the, um, where are we at right here? It wasn't preemption, redirection, what was I looking at? Yeah, the redirection enabled, right? So the redirection is the time after which the active virtual gateway is going to stop using an old MAC address. So in other words, this MAC right here, if router one were to fail, router two starts responding for that MAC. This is going to be the number of time in seconds that it's going to uh, wait before it dumps that MAC. And then you've got the forward timeout. And so that's the time after which the old MAC is going to be flushed from the router or the active virtual forward. It'll be reclaimed. And the problem there is, or I shouldn't say the problem, but the challenge is going to be the hosts are going to have to ARP out for another default gateway. So let's go ahead and see what happens here when we do that. All right, so we're going to shut down on router 1, and we're on router 1. We're good to go. So let's say interface range Ethernet 00 to 01. And we're simply going to say shut. So we're shutting down uh, both Ethernet 00 and Ethernet 01. So router 1, when we say do show GLBP, uh, is going to be sitting in the init state. His GLBP interface is down. Let's take a look and see what happened over here on router 2. You can see that it went immediately from standby to active. Do show GLBP. We've got preemption enabled so his state is active now if we come down and take a look at the forwarder one and this is what i was just talking about a second ago uh, so now that router one is offline right uh, we've got where are we at here so this was router one and this was router two so you can see here that we have this redirection enabled, and now the timer's down to 570 seconds. The time to live is 14,370. So if we run this command again, let's actually change here back over to the cursor. If we run this command again, So let's bring it down. You can see that the time for redirection right here, trying to highlight that, the time for redirection as well as the time to live for this virtual MAC address, which is the MAC address for router one. Router two is only going to carry the torch so long for router one before he says, that's it. Not only am I no longer responding, but I'm going to stop using it and then I'm going to flush it out of my um, out of my table. So the redirection, right? It's enabled. So in 516 seconds, that's the time after which the active virtual gateway is going to stop using this. Sorry, this old MAC address, right? It'll stop using it or stop giving it out in response to ARP requests. And then the time to live is at 14,316. And that's going to be when it gets flushed from the router active virtual forward. It's going to be reclaimed, right? And it'll be used. It could be used at a later time. And so that's what's going on. If we were to take a look at, uh, let's clear the screen here. If we were to take a look at, uh, just like show HSRP, 
you could say show glbp brief do show glbp brief right and you can see that on router 2 here router 2 is responsible and the active router for both of those mac addresses and so this is what's going to happen so those virtual mac addresses right now those are the responsibility of router 2 and router 2 is going to continue to respond to those as long as router 1 is down so let's come over to router 1 and let's say no shut come back over here to router 2 we're going to see that once the eigrp adjacency comes up there it is so we went from active to speak we're going to go from speak to standby because again we've got preemption enabled so let's say do show glbp brief you can still see that we're active so we're waiting give it a second here oh it did change i'm sorry i didn't see that it, i was looking at the wrong number yeah so it did change if i were to say show glbp you can see that we are the standby and there it is went from active to listen for group one and we should be going to standby show standby at the top for some reason it kick that message out after it had already transitioned over to standby so now if I were to say show GLBP brief you can see that before where the forwarder ah all right there we go before where the forwarder was uh, two and two that was a two we were active right for this mac address well now that router one has come back online we're no longer uh responsible for that so who is the forwarder it's going to be one that's router one who's the forwarder it's going to be forwarder two who is router two and that's why that's active here for us but we are listen right because we are listening uh for the mac uh, 0101 but we are not active for that mac address and let me uh actually scroll back up where we're before i was hoping to get it right next to each other but we did not yeah and you can see before it did transition to standby you could see where we were active active for both of those until right here the state it went state active listen but we had transitioned to standby right there and then by the time I ran the command here, we had transitioned back to where we were just listening. We weren't active for that MAC address. And you'll notice it also said local, local. See up here where it said local, local? Right there. That meant that we were the active router. The local router was the active router for those two MAC addresses. Right? Okay. All right. Well, that's a nice introduction. Uh, kind of a gateway into the uh no pun intended the gateway load balancing protocol and uh, this is going to wrap up discovery activity number 16. all right enjoy the rest of your weekend and i will see you all tomorrow evening